Okay, um, now I would like to use a very short video to introduce uh, the budgetary constraints on transportation security systems. Um, and uh, um, only four years after the 9-11, GAO expressed their concerns on future funding of Homeland Security programs. So we know that uh, Homeland Security programs, they are crisis driven. Most of, of them are crisis driven. So you can imagine that when the, cri when the crisis um, uh, is not going to happen or is not likely going to happen, people's attention, government's attention on these programs um, decreases. That is natural, right? So in 2005, uh, GAO expressed their concerns on future funding of uh, these homeland security programs, but their concerns did not happen. Okay, at least before fiscal year, before the end of fiscal year 2009, funding continued to actually rise at slower pace, and uh, uh, eventually there was a drop. Actual reductions on overall transportation security appropriations. Okay, um, you can imagine this is. This was the same for, uh, for, for homeland security programs because transportation security is a part of homeland security, right? So when transportation security appropriations um, decreased, you can you, you can imagine the trend, okay? For 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 all homeland security programs, so actual reductions in overall transportation security appropriations appeared in fiscal years. 2011 to 2013. And then we have fiscal year 2014. Okay. And there was there was a huge drop in uh, in in the funding on the funding of transportation security. Okay. For example, TSA's major aviation security accounts that had continued to rise through fiscal year 2012, dropping back to their fiscal year 2008 level in fiscal year 2013, and only recovering to slightly above fiscal year 2009 funding in fiscal year 2014. Okay, that's for aviation. For maritime security, the Coast Guard's ports, waterways, and coastal security programs uh, has has remained at roughly the same appropriation appropriation level going back to 2004 fiscal year 2004 okay and this was for fiscal year 2014 and for surface transportation security programs from TSA they have continued to operate at a very limited funding level which has been the which, which has been decreasing since year fiscal since fiscal year 2012. So you can say after uh, uh, the happening of 9/11, uh, the homeland security was the first priority of the country, of the United States. United States even started wars against Middle Eastern countries, especially Iraq. After that, in the name of Counterterrorism, right? And uh, um, uh, the money invested in transportation security, uh, homeland security increased dramatically after that. Okay, and uh, uh, that huge investment continued for how many years? Roughly, um, say eight, nine years. Okay, and specifically for transportation security funding it dropped it dropped uh in fiscal fiscal year 2011 and 13 and in fiscal year 2014 that was a tough year for all government fundings but yeah for transportation security there was a huge drop in fiscal year 2014 in terms of the funding in terms of the funding and uh, fiscal year 2014 was actually just a start for the deduction of uh, funding on transportation security because in fiscal year 2015, in the president's 
proposed fiscal year 2015 budget, which recommends a $1.05 billion reduction in DHS net dis uh, discretionary budget authority compared with fiscal year 2014. So you can imagine, um, because transportation security is part of the job of DHS, and transportation security funding should also be deducted, right? Specifically, 100 million through TSA risk-based security efficiencies, 20 million through cutting TSA playbook operations at selected airports, 4.9 million in the TSA Federal Flight DAC Officer Program, 19.5 million in the Federal Air Marshal Service, 10.9 million from elimination of four TSA visible intermodal prevention and response uh, teams. Uh, there was used to be 39 teams and after this deduction, 30, uh, 35 teams. And 1.5 million from uh, dollars, okay, from elimination of four uh, Coast Guard vessel board and search teams used for ports, waterways, and coastal security enforcement activities. So this all deductions on transportation security funding, they are part of this 1.05 billion reduction for DHS budget, okay? So uh, 2015, that's 14 years after the 9-11 attack, 9-11 attack. So you can say people's attention has uh, had decreased a lot, okay? So uh, that's, that, that, that's a crisis driven feature of of the job, of transportation security, of homeland security. And in order to maintain the long time sustainability of transportation security um, programs, okay, crisis is not the only factor. Okay, there are other factors, mm, say, influence the sustainability of transportation security. Uh, systems, okay? And uh, the first one is economic uh, fluctuations. Uh, I mean, um, if the economy is not doing very well for, for a specific country or around the world, then you can imagine the money, the, uh, the funding for different programs, not only transportation security programs or homeland security programs, uh, all uh, government programs will be affected. Right? If the GDP increases um, um, steadily and continuously, then it means that more money can be invested in all necessary programs. But if there was uh, a deficit in a specific year and the, the, the debt of the government is increasing, then it's more likely that um, uh, there will be deductions in different programs of the government. Right, and the second leg crisis, of course, uh, it is a factor uh, for for the long term uh, affects the long term sustainability of transportation security budget. For example, in two thousand nine, there was a failed terrorist attempt to blow up the Northwest aircraft. Okay, that was a failed attack, and that failed attack actually produced a temporary boost for aviation security. Okay, temporary boost of what? Of funding, of money invested in aviation security. So the, it's just as practical as that. Okay, so crisis driven. Okay, crisis driven is, uh, it, might be, it might be the most important feature of transportation security budget and uh, regulation and policies. And also another factor that is very important for long-term sustainability of transportation security budget is lifespan of technologies and systems. For example, um, you can say X-ray scanners at, in every airport here in the United States, right? That technology, X-ray uh, screening or um, infrared screening, or uh, you can say uh, examination, 
they are very mature uh, technologies. They have been used for decades and they will be used for, 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 uh, for finite time. So you don't have to, um, I mean, invest a lot of money improving the technology such as X-ray and infrared imaging and screening, but you have to replace instrument because um, you need to just um, eliminate old instrument or, or, um, or uh, the tools you used and to buy new ones, okay? And for some technologies, um, uh, they need to be improved more frequently than X-ray and uh, infrared imaging. And there will be new technologies needed to be developed, to be invented. Accordingly, new uh, hardware and software need to be manufactured, developed, right? That will also cost a lot of money, okay? So uh, these investments on technologies and uh, software and uh, hardware and systems These investments, they also affect long-term sustainability of transportation security budget, okay? Okay, so uh, uh, the question here is that how to maintain this sustainability? In other words, how to make sure reliable, reliable sources of money? So we can find some methods from fiscal year 2015 Obama budget proposal, okay? Efficiency is cl claimed through expanded targeting of programs. Uh, the purpose is to reduce the labor needed for transportation systems, okay? That's a way to save money, okay? That's, uh, th th that's one end of your budget. Okay, use less money, so less budget is needed. Another method, greater usage of fees and offsetting collections from transportation system users. Uh, let's just translate. Let me translate this sentence. Charge more from taxpayers and uh, 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 system users. That's another way to make sure the budget. What is that way? It's not saving money. It's charging more or collecting more from users. For example, uh, there is a, a, a aviation security fee. When you, whenever you buy a flight ticket in United States, okay, it used to be only 2.6 or $2.8, but now it's currently $5.6 for a one-way trip. Okay, so it was increased from the original price, and you can expect it to increase again, maybe in future. Actually, uh, there was proposals for the increase of this fee again, but uh, currently uh, I looked up the, the, <laughs> the website of TSA, the current fee for one way trip is still $5.6. So it means that uh, you can just collect a small amount of money from each user and considering the size of the business, the size of the market. And uh, you can expect more and more money, a huge chunk of money in long term. Okay, and everybody needs to pay that. Even they don't know, even they don't know you have to pay that, okay, to pay for the security or transportation security systems. Okay, the first method is saving money. The second method is what? is collecting more money. That's very typical, right? And the third one is downsizing or elimination of certain programs if they are not necessary, right? Uh, that's natural and that's also a method to save money instead of creating more money. And the second method here is for creating more money, right? By charging people more, okay? so. Yeah, that's all I want to say about budgetary constraints. And there are more details in your textbook uh, if you are interested in them. And uh, this is also the end of uh, lecture 11 of the class. Uh, and this is also the last lecture of the class. Uh, I just want to uh, appreciate you for what you have done so far in this class. I know it's very hard time 
right now because everybody needs to uh, stay home. And I know that, I know that um, the online teaching is worse than in-person teaching in terms of um, students' response, in terms of the performance of, uh, of the teaching. Okay, so um, next semester, next semester, um, the university will um, go back to in-person mainly, but huh, uh, a huge class like this, we have 100, more than 140 students in this class this semester. Um, if there is a class as big as this one, uh, it will still be online, I, I, as I heard so far, okay? But yeah, 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 yeah. This is the last lecture of the of the class, last um, video of the lecture. So thank you, and uh, yeah, I will just stop here.